Kia ora and all. welcome back to Breakfast. It's coming up to 22 past seven. Now, as we've heard this morning, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released its sixth report, presenting its starkest warning yet. Within the next two decades, scientists say temperatures will likely rise by more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels, bringing widespread devastation and extreme weather. For decades, the world has focused on reducing carbon dioxide emissions as a solution. But this year, scientists are urging a focus on methane as the planet's best hope for preventing catastrophic climate change. Here in Aotearoa, 43.5% of our emissions come from methane, and we've got the tools to significantly reduce levels of the gas getting into the atmosphere, but is it enough? Joining us from Christchurch to explain is Ag Research Research Director, uh, Dr Trevor Stuthridge. Good morning, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. Gosh, we've stuffed things up, haven't we? What's your response to, to the report? Well, Maureen and Jenny May, uh, look, my response is um, I haven't read all 3,500 3, pages, but certainly in summary, it, it, it concludes very clearly that uh, climate change is real and that it's uh, caused by human activities. Um, it concludes that there's an urgency to create new technologies and products to solve the problem. And I think from a New Zealand context to your intro, uh, it concludes that methane is an important uh, target for uh, climate change mitigation. Yeah. And in our country, particularly because of the, the particular footprint that we have for greenhouse gases. Okay. Okay, so I mean one of the other really important parts of this report is that whilst we've stuffed things up, actually there's something we can do about it. It's not too late, right? Not at all. I think, in fact, what it just, just, it just emphasises the urgency of coming up with good solutions to our climate change issues and our emissions. Okay, the big focus is on methane and the impacts it has on global warming. So before we get into uh, some of the technology well, that you're talking about, 101 on methane, please. Where does it come from? Yeah, 101. So really straightforwardly, cows in many ways don't eat grass, they swallow grass and then there's a big vat called the rumen in the front of the stomach where lots of bacteria break the grass down into something that the cow can digest. And one of the consequences of it, there are some bacteria that live inside the stomach that like to make methane. They use it as a, they generate it as a byproduct of their existence. Um, and as a result, uh, methane comes out of the cow in the form of belches and burps um, as, a, as a consequence of digesting that grass. Okay, so how we can reduce methane is where you're research comes in, right? So you're developing a vaccine. What is it and how does it work? Yeah, look, uh, what, what happens is we don't want those bacteria that make the methane to be in the stomach. So what we do is we are adding a, adding a, uh, a vaccine to the cow. The cow will generate antibodies in its saliva. So like we do when we get vaccinated, it makes antibodies. And then the saliva is full of antibodies. They go with the saliva into the stomach um, where they attach to the bacteria and stop them from growing and therefore stop the methane production. So very similar to what we do with vaccination, except in this case it's targeting the bacteria inside the cow's stomach. Wow. So when is this technology available? We're working uh, currently, we're being funded by the government and by industry uh, through the Pastoral Greenhouse Gas Research Consortium and the New Zealand Agricultural Greenhouse Gas Research Centre. Um, we are targeting currently five to seven years um, for the technology. This is a very, very leading edge, globally challenging science that we're doing here in New Zealand. Um, so there are technical challenges to making it work. We've shown so far that we can make the antibodies, we can show it so, so far we can get it into the saliva of the animals and now we're trying to make sure it survives in the stomach um, to attack those bacteria and stop the methane. So, so in, five to seven years. So in terms of the vaccine, is it enough to significant, significantly cut emissions? Yeah, the vaccine that we're working on, we believe will generate a, somewhere between 20 and 35 percent reduction in methane. The reason the farmers uh, and the government are very excited about the vaccine is probably the one of the multitude of solutions that we have offer that has the biggest impact on a single technology solution. Wow. Okay, just to wrap things up, to put things into context, if we don't act now, what are the consequences for our planet, for our children, for our mokopuna grandchildren? What does the science tell us about the future if we continue on the path that we are on? Well, I think the IPCC report is very clear. We're going to see more extreme weather, weather issues, droughts, fires, uh, hurricanes and so forth. Um, that's going to affect our ability to live in our cities, many of which are on the coast where we're going to get sea level rises. Uh, it's going to affect our ability to produce food um, and therefore lead to starvation and famine. Um, overall, it's, uh, it's, it's most fundamental impact, in our opinion, um, on the survivability of our civilization uh, for the foreseeable future. And it's very, very critical that we address 
against it. And I think the, the report is very clear and unequivocal in that conclusion. It is happening. It is happening now. The good news, as per the vaccine solution, is there are ways to mitigate it. And I think the message from the report is very clear. Start working on those and accelerate the delivery of those technologies as soon as you can. Wow. And so we are very grateful for the work uh, that mm -hmm. you and your colleagues are currently doing. Uh, Dr Trevor Stutheridge, Ag Research Research Director, cannot thank you enough for your time and your mahi. Tēnā koe. True pleasure. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what do you say after that? Amazing work that's obviously being done, but boy, if we don't do something about it now. It is uh, 27 past uh, seven. We will be back after the break with your 7.30 news.